Greetings and top of the day to you. Today we're going to explore the campus of one of the premier private universities in the United States. Actually, the world. From the west coast of California, this is Gio Divulge. Welcome to Stanford University. Top of the day to you. This is Tom. I'm standing in front of the Hoover Institute at Stanford University. Today we're going to take a look at some of the artwork and the rest of the campus here and some of its history. So stay tuned. Today I will be exploring the university by bicycle. The campus is very large and can be covered by foot. However, it might take more than a day to comfortably do so. Sculptures and artwork are scattered around the 8,180 acres that make up this campus. Stanford University was founded in 1885 by Leland and Jane Stanford in memory of their only son, Leland Stanford Jr., who died a year earlier of typhoid fever at the age of 15. Leland Sr. made his fortune in the railroad business, part of a group of men that united the continent by building the nationwide railroad system. He became a U.S. Senator and Governor of California, as well as the founder of Stanford. The Stanford Memorial Church was built by Jane Stanford in memory of her husband, Leland, after his passing. It was dedicated in 1903. Jane Stanford and her husband were both deeply religious, and Jane wanted the church to be non-denominational so it could be welcoming to all. It is essentially Protestant in design. During his first century, the church, the church suffered damage from two earthquakes, the San Francisco quake of 1906 and the Loma Prieta quake of 1989. The church was repaired after each. During the 1906 quake, the crossing structure moved differently than the rest of the building, causing large holes in the roof, and the original 80-foot, 12-sided steeple and its clock tower fell onto the roof, destroying the tower. The steeple was never repaired and the clock was saved by using it on the Stanford Clock Tower, a separate structure. The church is thought to be the centerpiece of the Stanford main quad. Jane said during the church's commissioning, while my heart is in the university, my soul is in the church. She died two years after the church was commissioned. While the church was dedicated in 1903, it took another two years to decorate and complete the interior. There are 29 large carvings of ancient religious symbols on the walls of the church. Stained glass windows symbolizing Christian symbols and stories can be found along the sides of the church as well as the altar. Mrs. Stanford, it was said, wanted little blank spaces and wanted the church to be dimly lit. The back of the church is slightly higher than the altar, and when entering from the back, one walks down the aisle at a slight angle to reach the altar. The stained glass windows in the church are based on the religious paintings that the Stanfords had admired while in Europe. The choir balcony to the rear of the church has five pipe organs. This makes it possible to play several styles of music. Stanford University has an extensive sports program, specializing in 36 major sport categories for both men and women. 20 for women, 16 for men, with sailing being co-ed. 
Stanford has won 142 national championships, 117 NCAA championships, with 55 of those since the year 2000. Athletes associated with Stanford have also won 270 Olympic medals. A major museum at Stanford is the Contour Center for Visual Arts. Originally named the Stanford University Museum, it opened in 1894. The museum was heavily damaged during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. It remained closed during the renovation and structural seismic upgrades. It reopened in 1999 as the Iris and Gerard Candor Center for the Visual Arts commonly referred to as the Cantor Museum. The Cantor Museum has over 38,000 items and is constantly rotating its collection. Some of the pieces you see here may not have been here if you visit in the future, but new ones not here during this filming will no doubtably be here then. The collection includes modern and ancient art from around the world including sculptures, photographs, paintings, and drawings. It is open to the public year-round in the early afternoon. The Stanford Mausoleum is the final resting place of the Stanford family. Leland Stanford and his wife Jane and their son Leland Jr., who died at the age of 16. Once a year in October, the mausoleum is opened and a wreath is laid as part of the Founders Day celebration. Originally, the building had two sphinxes on the corners of the front of the structure. Jane Stanford, however, had some reservations of their design and had them replaced with two new sphinxes, which are still present today. The original sphinxes were moved to the rear of the building and are still there today. Here is the back of the mausoleum where the two original sphinxes reside today. Maybe you can guess what Mrs. Stanford's objection was. Nearby is the statue of the Stanford family and the Angel of Grief. Of course, the main purpose of Stanford is academics. The university is organized around 40 academic departments for, the, for both undergraduate and graduate level study, focusing on four professional schools, law, medicine, education, and business. Many are cutting edge in their programs. The Stanford Medical Center, for instance, is known worldwide for advances in medical research over the decades. The Business Department and the Computer Science Center are credited with promoting technology used around the world. William Hewitt and David Packard were both students at Stanford in the late 1930s. 
With encouragement from their professor, they started the Hewitt Packard Corporation in a garage just a few miles from Stanford, thus giving birth to Silicon Valley. Other famous businesses with Stanford ties to its students and its staff include Cisco Systems, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, Sun Microsystems, and Yahoo, and hundreds of others, changing the world forever. So, I hope you enjoyed today's short tour of the Stanford University campus. There's a lot more to see than we can put in in just this short video. So if you're ever in Silicon Valley, I suggest you stop by the campus here, take a look for yourself. You could spend a whole day walking this campus and seeing the art and the history. So until next time, be in the now and keep living the dream.